Hello everyone, it's Maria here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a makeup artist and green beauty expert living in Toronto, Canada. And today I'm here with a video about how to go from eczema to beautiful skin. This is gonna be a guide for skincare for mature women over 40. Now, everything I'm gonna be using today is gonna to be clean and natural. I'm gonna give you some tips on what ingredients to look for. And, you know, healing the skin from eczema is not something that I suffer uh, with myself, but it's something that I've had to heal in my youngest son. If you've been here uh, on my channel before, you probably have heard me talking about it. Um, he's now eight, but we struggle um, from, you know, with eczema uh, on his skin um, and scalp from the moment he was born until about three or four years of age. All right, so this is going to be a skincare uh, routine, skincare rituals. I'm going to give you tips for the face and also the body because that is skincare as well. It's not just the face. All right, so let's get to it. So when it comes to caring for your face, when you suffer from eczema, um, as a beauty expert and makeup artist, I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it on the brows. I've seen it around the eye area, of course, on the hands um, and on different parts of the body. But let's start with the face. Um, the very first thing I want you to do is to remove SLS from your cleansing routine. Now, you don't have to, you know, be a detective and go check your skincare to see if it has SLS in it, but if you're getting uh, a lot of lather when you cleanse your face, um, I want you to then go look at what's in there, okay? There could be a uh, coconut surfactant, but a lot of conventional skincare, especially cleansers, are made with SLS. And in healing my son's skin, that's the first thing that we had to remove. Now, I feel like the whole washing concept with a lot of lather um, and being super duper clean is a, maybe a North American phenomenon or perhaps a European phenomenon because um, you know, we are so into cleansing. From the moment the baby's uh, born, we want to bathe it in bubble bath and cleanse it. And, you know, that was something that I was kind of a little bit more conscious of because he was my second one who, uh, you know, suffered with eczema. But, um, you know, it's it's something, you know, about cleansing and over cleansing, with I, which I think just um, destroys our skin. So, when it comes to mature skin, I always say this, regardless of whether you have eczema on your face, you have to be very conscious of the cleansing, what you cleanse with, and how often you cleanse your skin. If you're washing two or three times a day, for whatever reason, I want you to stop doing that. That's the first thing. Please stop washing your face that frequently. You should be removing the day once, and that would be in the evening or at night or when you come home from work, um, if you feel like you have to do that. I know some of us are still wearing masks uh, when we work, so you might feel like just cleansing and removing everything when you come home. I think that's a, a fantastic time to do it. So, and then the cleanser, right? So now that we're kind of reducing the cleanser, uh, what are you washing your face with? So I want to give you three options here for cleansers because all of us are so different and we have, uh, you know, different textural needs or appeals, I guess. Um, so we have different things that we like. We have different smells, etc. cetera. Um, I want you to be, uh, you know, conscious to, of the cleanser, uh, how strong the scent is, and I want you to go to something that doesn't lather. So in order to do that, we're going to be talking about three different types of cleansers and three types of uh, cleanse, cleansing, not methods, but okay, cleansing products. We have oil, and this is with uh, tallow. So that would be the oil cleanser that you have to remove with a face cloth. And then you have the oil cleanser. This one here is by Consonant. This one here will come clean, will rinse clean. It will emulsify a tiny bit when you add water to it, but you're not going to get that lather. And yes, my friends, it's going to remove all the makeup. All right. So for those of you who hate the face cloth step, um, a lot of cleansers that come in a balm, they will, you know, require you to 
use a face cloth. Helena Lane's cleansers, which I talk about often, are the same. This one here is a tallow cleanser. Um, and tallow is something that I talked about in my, you know, a couple videos ago or some videos ago. That's the video that went viral. I'm going to link it here for you as well. But uh, cleansing with tallow is such a fantastic experience um, if you are a meat eater, okay? If you're not, of course, you have to go to something that's plant-based. So look at Helena Lane's cleansers, which look exactly like that. So that, that would be like a botanical based. But with that, you're using, um, you know, just kind of like really... Uh, holistic ingredients, very gentle, massaging everything. And that's really going to help with eczema. Tallow is one of those holistic ingredients that is fantastic for eczema, not just to cleanse with, but also to apply as a, as a balm. I'll talk about that a little bit um, later when we come to moisturizing. Um, this one here also contains organic chamomile flowers. Again, very soothing. And when you choose tallow, I want you to pay attention and make sure that that your tallow is grass-fed, all right? So this is the pristine uh, uh, tallow. It's a cleansing butter um, by Eternal uh, Tallow in Manitoba here in Canada. This has to be removed with a face cloth, okay? If you don't like the face cloth step, I want you to go to an oil cleanser that can be uh, rinsed off, all right? So this one, as a makeup artist, this one here is fantastic. Uh, it will remove uh, all your makeup, which I know sometimes when you have eczema, you know you want to be cleansing your skin. You have to. You have to remove the day. You have to wear the makeup if you're a makeup wearer. Uh, and if you don't like the face cloth, then you need to go with something that is, uh, you know, just oil-based, but perhaps will emulsify a little bit so you can rinse it clean. Okay? And how many times are we rinsing? Just once. All right? So, and then for those of you who are not into the oil cleansing at all, I want you to think about a milk cleanser. Now, this one here is by Graydon Skincare, and it's the Aloe Milk Cleanser. So again, very comforting. Some of the ingredients that you want to be putting on your skin, all right? So the pink comes from Gromwell, Gromwell Root, but this cleanser has niacinamide, it has black tea, and it has aloe. It also has um, apricot kernel oil, which gives you the nice fats, very, 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 very light scent. Um, you have to stay away from a lot of the things that are fragranced out there. Um, and even sometimes when it comes to essential oils, I want you to be very, very careful with that. Um, it doesn't mean that essential oils are for everyone and uh, you need to pay attention because uh, skin with eczema is so sensitive that even the essential oils can bother it. So the cleanser by Graydon, the Aloe Milk Cleanser, is a milky cleanser, feels amazing on the skin. You're going to massage it gently. It's, you're going to pay attention to the eyes. If you're wearing a lot of eye makeup, perhaps you'll need a face cloth for a little bit of assistance around the eye area. And then this one as well will just rinse clean. Now, when it comes to uh, keeping the skin comfortable, hydrated, and moisturized, if you are a lover of the mists, you can bring in a mist. I love this one here by Graydon. This is the face food mineral mist because a lot of the minerals that it contains can actually be fantastic for eczema. So it contains zinc, it contains magnesium, it contains silver. So um, a beautiful mist. You know, for any time of day, if you want to cool and soothe your skin, um, over makeup, under makeup, you can definitely make something like this as part of your, your routine. And then when it comes to uh, moisturizing, you know, you need to have a good moisturizer. All right. So that is a given. So something like this, that's specifically for sensitive skin. This is the super sensitive skin stuff. Um, again, by Graydon Skin Care. And this is a face and eye cream, which is amazing. Helps you cut back on your uh, the steps and your routine. But also, this one is completely unscented. I carry that in my makeup kit um, because when I'm on, uh, you know, photo shoots or on set, I need to have something that is unscented that can appeal to everyone. The other reason why I love um, the skin stuff is because it's a ceramide cream. So it's, um, it's a botanical ceramide. So it helps replenish your skin's moisture barrier. 
and skin with eczema can be very rough and very dry. Um, it also helps hydrate the skin with mineral rich maple sap water, which is a fantastic ingredient here in Canada. Um, it also contains rosehip oil, so it's giving you some of those vitamins, the A, the B, and the E. And it also contains uh, evening primrose oil. So again, back to those kind of like fatty, uh, the fatty acids. Now this moisturizer does feel lighter. Um, so, and I think it's wonderful for everyone to use. Um, again, depending on where you live. So this one like really nicely absorbed, um, doesn't smell like anything, but it smells pleasant from the botanicals that are in there. Um, if you live in a colder climate, you might need to boost that up with something. And when I mean boost it up, you know, it means that you just might need to bring in um, an oil. So let's say that you are applying it on the skin and it's a cold day where you are. You're going to bring in your favorite oil. And it doesn't have to be with essential oils, but it can if you know it doesn't bother your eczema. And you're just going to mix it in into a nice little smoothie, as Graydon from Graydon Skincare says. And then you're just going to apply it on the skin. All right. So it gives you um, just like really nice moisture. Um, and uh, it helps kind of like beef up the moisturizer if you need it. My hands right now, guys smell and feel amazing okay don't forget to put any excess product on your hands if you are dry so for mature skin this is very important um, because a lot of um, eczema is also found on the hands now if you know that you are super sensitive and you live in a colder climate and you need something richer this is where the tallow bombs um, come in this is the premium whip tallow it is a hundred percent grass-fed tallow um this one here is the sensitive it does also come with essential oils but the sensitive doesn't contain any essential oils um and this one here is also mixed with organic jojoba which is infused with calendula flowers now something like this can definitely be put on your skin it smells a little bit like a farm i have to warn you um so you know be conscious of that and that's why i say that uh, you know different textures and scents appeal to different people so this might remind you like you know of home um it might remind you you know of like um grass and you know like being i guess near a farm the countryside um but i can't stop talking about how many amazing benefits are in tallow so the whipped tallows I find are easier for application on the face. If you know you're going to be sensitive with the scent, it does come in a lavender, frankincense, lemongrass, um, you know, concoction with essential oils, but it also comes in completely unscented. Um, I find the whipped one is easier to spread on the skin. Tiny amount is all you need, um, and it just kind of like melts into the skin. Um, my friend Lourdes, who makes these, also puts a beautiful instructional little pamphlet, um, you know, in there. So I will be providing that for you if you order from me. And it gives you like the 101 uses that tallow can be used for. And also with a product like this, you know, if you have a jar like that, it's about four ounces. You can use it on other areas, um, you know, of your skin. The the one thing I didn't mention and... Um, I apologize about that is when we go, you know, uh, back to the cleansing, there are also tallow soaps that you can use to wash your face. I was going to save this for the body, but you know what? Like, you know, I'm very practical and minimalist. So if the soap works for your hands and your body, why not use it on your face as well? Again, a hundred percent grass fed tallow for this one. And the third focus that I want to draw when we get to the skin is a little bit more ingredient based, but of course it has to do with, um, eczema and skincare. So the third tip would be try to bring in some zinc oxide. Um, the butters that I, I've, you know, like, uh, noted here are amazing. Uh, this is ancestral skincare. Uh, the tallow butters, um, are ancestral skincare. They've been used for ever in the year for all types of skin concerns but when it comes to you know using a sun cream or maybe using a little bit of an eye cream because I've seen eczema around the eye area like up here um, it can be very difficult also for um, eye makeup application the consonant firming cream this is a zinc oxide 
eye cream. So it helps to brighten, yes, the under eye area, but it also, um, you know, would help, will help definitely with eczema. So zinc oxide is in diaper uh, rash creams. There's a reason for that. Very soothing, very, um, you know, calming for the skin. Uh, so if you need an eye cream or you know that your eczema is specifically around here, bring in a zinc oxide eye cream. And the other area for the zinc oxide would be in a sun cream, all right? So you know that most, um, you know, uh, mineral sunscreens now, of course, contain the zinc oxide. I want to say that a lot of them are very, very whitening. And I want to give you a little demo on the Helena Lane uh, sun creams, which contain zinc oxide. Uh, these ones here are 81% organic, so they are made with organic ingredients. And the reason why you want to have something richer like this with zinc oxide, but also because they're made with shea butter, okay? So shea butter was one of the key players when we were healing my son's uh, skin. So you definitely want to have something a little bit richer. So you know when we did the step with the moisturizer, if you have a lighter moisturizer and you're also an outdoor person, you might want to bring in a sun cream that contains not only the zinc oxide, but it contains the shea butter, like the Helena Lane sun creams. And of course, on top of that, it's going to protect you and, uh, you know, from the sun and the elements. So the Helena Lane uh, sun creams, there's two of them. This one here is the chamomile and calendula. This sun cream is unscented. So I want to show you. A little goes a long way, and I want to show you just how nicely it melts into the skin, all right? So remember, about a quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon for your whole face, ears, and neck. Um, and do you see that? undetectable, right? So it's really, really nice because when, when you make these things out of shea butter and plant oils, they do melt into the skin. I find that a lot of zinc oxide products are very drying. And although they do help your eczema, we're also talking about mature skin. And mature skin has also other needs, right? It needs to be moisturized. It needs to be protected. So the sun creams are um, made with shea butter, jojoba oil, and the jojoba oil is infused with calendula and chamomile flowers. It's also um, made with avocado and beeswax. So this is not vegan. And that's what kind of like really helps it kind of, you know, smooth it in. Beeswax is an amazing ingredient, again, for uh, dry, rough, you know, eczema um, skin. So uh, definitely bring in something like this, a little bit of a thicker layer, something more occlusive. If you're not someone who spends time in the sun, or goes outside, uh, you know, and you are using a lighter moisturizer, you can bring in an oil uh, to kind of seal everything with. That would be the third step, right? To, sh uh, to sorry, to soothe and kind of create a more occlusive barrier. So you could use something unscented like this. This is the rose hip and calendula. This is the calming facial oil. That could be your last step. Or if you know that your moisturizer is perfect for the other times of the year, but not in the winter, why don't you uh, massage a bit of tallow balm in the middle, you know, in between your hands and press that onto your skin to put on another like richer, more occlusive barrier that will help trap all that moisture uh, from your skincare onto your skin. So now let's move to the body. This one is huge when it comes to eczema. Um, back to the bathing, right? The bathing, the long hot showers, long time in the tub. Um, this has to do, of course, with mature skin. It's going to dry you out, but also your babies. Don't do that, okay? The long baths, you need to, you need to do something about that. So I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, all right? So um, you're going to put something in that bath water, all right? So I talked about um, making an oatmeal packed back in my holistic uh, ingredient video. Super easy to do. You just kind of uh, take some cheesecloth, throw your oats in there, bundle it up, uh, you know, tie it up on top with a little rubber band, throw it in your tub. OK, um, you can do that for your baby. You can do that for yourself. Put something in there that's nourishing. The other thing that you need to do is have a really nice body oil. 
my son is eight and I still put body oils into his bathtub. You can start out with something that you have in your kitchen. Avocado would be great. Olive is great too. A little bit richer and a little bit thicker. So a little bit more difficult to clean from your bathtub. Um, you want to do those things. You want to nourish your skin. You want to, you know, protect yourself while you're in the water, but you also have to think a little bit about the cleaning process um, because the person going in there after you, <laughs> once you've drained it, it's going to be an oil slick, my friends. So um, do a little bit of an oil. I really love this one here by Province Apothecary. This is the lover's oil. Please ignore the fact that it's called a lover's oil. Yes, it's perfect for gifting. Valentine's Day is around the corner. I love this one here. It's rose and cedar wood very warm grounding smell and the reason why I love it is because of course you can do a kind of little few little drops in your bath water but you can also apply it to your skin the minute you step out think about the towel think how rough you are with it I remind people about that for their skin as well you have to be just so gentle when you uh you know take the water off your skin and it's the same thing with your body. You are going to put some oil in your bath. You can do an oatmeal pack. And then when you come out of the bath, right, you're going to pat your skin dry with a towel and then do a body oil. I love this one here by Province Apothecary. There's a few other ones um, in the store that I have, but find something that you love and you know that you're going to apply. All right. So the first thing would be remove um, SLS from your, uh, your routine, face and body. And we talked about the tallow soap. You can use the tallow soap to wash your hands if that's where the eczema is, to wash your body. Um, goat's milk uh, soap is also amazing. Tallow is fantastic. That video I did about tire, ta tallow went viral, okay? So um, think about these things. Remove all the SLS. You should not be sitting in a big bubbly bathtub that contains, um, you know, those surfactants that are going to completely dry out. Your so remove the SLS, control the temperatures. Do not use super hot water. Um, even if you're going to sit in the bathtub, it has to be, you know, like not super hot. You know, when, you, when you're going in there and then you come out and you you look like a lobster okay don't do that your skin shouldn't be red and then add the second thing would be add the oils and an oatmeal pack into your bath the third thing yeah when you come out is the moisturization okay so the body oil can be used in the tub and out of the tub um, tallow butter, again, fantastic for a body moisturizer, especially if you're a little bit more sensitive with how it smells. So, um, you know, pay attention to that and, uh, you know, try and choose a product that is actually multi-purpose. Tallow, the tallow bombs, uh, the tallow butters can be used everywhere on the body and on the face as well. When it comes to uh, zinc or protection, you know, you could get um, like a diaper rash cream that will help you out. Um, and if you want to do something like, you know, with sun protection, then something like Helena Lane's uh, cream is amazing. Also in the store is another product by um, Eternal Tallow. And she has now created a tallow and zinc oxide cream. I'm going to link everything for you below with little explanations so when you're reading through it um, you can understand what to get and what it was that I was talking about sometimes we see these long descriptions and then it's just you know just the word the name of the product and then the link and um, we forget what it was exactly that we needed or wanted that product for so I'm going to link everything uh, for you below but keep in mind that pretty much the way that you treat your face is going to be the way you treat your, bo your body. When we're talking about uh, skin over 40, mature skin, uh, it starts to show elsewhere. We are not just this. You are not just your face. And when you are struggling with eczema, you, you want to take care of that everywhere. I understand it can be difficult when you have eczema on your face. Um, it can be so difficult to, you know, to do your beauty routine and wear makeup, but your body has to be taken care of as well. And as you know, a culture that bathes every single day, and if you work out, maybe you're doing it twice, you know, um, and you, we don't have those, you know, rituals for our body. I feel like we suffer from these 
uh, you know, skin conditions a lot more. So next week, I'm going to have another video for you. Again, it will be eczema related and it's going to be about how to do your makeup. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, a beauty routine, a little bit of skin prep, but then how to do makeup in a way that works if you are suffering with eczema, especially on your face. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know how your skin does if you try any of these tips that I recommended. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful and I'll catch you here next week. Bye-bye.